It's been said, if you can change your thoughts, you can change your world. Hello and welcome to Kingdom Connection. Today on the broadcast, my dad continues his series from his brand new book, The Spirit of Python. There's a real enemy at work against us, and his plans include attacking our mind and creating a battle from within. If you've been dealing with negative thinking, or maybe you know someone who's struggling with depression or fear, this message is for you. There's a way to defeat the plans of the enemy, and it can begin today. So get your Bibles and turn to Isaiah 59 and learn how to protect yourself from snake eggs in your head. If you have your Bibles, look with me in verse 4. No one calls for justice, nor does any plead for truth. They trust in empty words and speak lies. They conceive evil. Listen to these words. They conceive evil and bring forth iniquity. They hatch vipers' eggs and weave the spider's web. He who eats of their eggs die, and, and from that which is crushed, a viper breaks out. They hatch vipers' eggs. They hatch snake eggs. They hatch snake eggs. Here, the writer is comparing the conception of sin with being like a snake egg that begins with a thought. They hatch it. It has, to, it has to be planted in the mind. Sin begins in the mind. It does not begin with an act of the body. It does not begin with the act of the soul. It begins in the mind. I say this to you, and I want you to remember what I'm about to say. The greatest battle for your soul is not in the heavenlies between angels and demons. The greatest battle for your soul is between your ears. Because the enemy works like a serpent. It's interesting that pythons particularly, and I, 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 I um, took the spirit of python from Acts 16. It's where the spirit of divination, which is in the Greek, means python. It's the only time that we're given the name of an evil spirit in the book of Acts. It's interesting that python snakes lay more eggs than any other serpent. As a matter of fact, they can lay over a hundred eggs at one time. And what I want you to see about this as I talk to you today about snake eggs in your head is how the enemy loves to plant thoughts like eggs, like snake eggs in our head, just as Isaiah 59 said. And if you don't deal with them, if you don't crush them, if you don't dig them out, those eggs will hatch. And sin will become more than a thought. It will become an action. Thoughts become actions. Thoughts become act. What you think on continually, you will act on. Your life will begin to move in the direction of the continual way you begin to think. James 1 and verse 15 said, Every sin begins with a thought. Listen to this verse. For when lust has conceived, where? In the mind. It brings forth sin, where? Through the deeds of the body. And then sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death into the spirit. So it begins in the mind, and once you begin to think it, what you think, you will begin to act out through the body, and then that sin will begin to bring death to the spirit. The greatest battle for your soul is between your ears. The brutal mass killings that we saw in Connecticut, those, the, that young man that walked in and began to shoot those children in that, in that school, in Connecticut uh, about a year ago that was just so terrifying and horrible. It didn't just happen overnight. Somewhere Satan slipped a snake egg into that boy's head. And if you don't deal with it, if you don't, if you don't dig out those thoughts, if you don't cast down those thoughts, 
those thoughts will begin to grow. Just as the python mother has to get on the eggs and coil herself around the eggs, and she uses her body temperature to cause enough heat to be over the eggs that the snakes will stay alive. You see, it's not a sin to be tempted. We can't help when things, you know, we see things, we flipping through stations, we hear things, we have thoughts randomly that just come at us, and you, you can't help that, you can't control that. But what you don't do is allow that thought to, to reside there and stay there and then hatch and grow. The old timers used to say, you can't help it if a, if a bird flies over your head, but you don't have to let him make a nest in your hair. And that's how it is with thoughts. You really can't help random thoughts that go by, but what you can do is control how long you dwell on them and how long you allow them to reside in your mind. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, Whoever looks at a woman to lust after her in his heart has already committed adultery. He said, when you look and you, and you look with a look of lust, so you have to control. You can't help it if you see somebody riding, running by or whatever, and you see them and you have a thought that hits you, but you are not to allow your mind. That's a snake egg that the enemy wants to entice and let it be full grown into a sin. But all you have to do if you want victory over it is decide not to allow the enemy to keep you controlled in your thinking. It starts with a thought. Whatever you look at, whatever you listen to, whatever you dwell on begins to incubate in your mind. When you understand this, you understand why Job said in Job 31, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully upon a girl. I made a covenant with my eyes. If ever there was a generation that needed that scripture, it is this generation. We need to remind ourselves, gentlemen, every day of our lives, I need to make a covenant with my eyes today. That I would have bouncing eyes. You can't help it if you see it, but bounce, boom. <laughs> I made a covenant. Say that with me. I made a covenant with my eyes that I would not lustfully look upon the opposite sex. You can't help it sometimes when somebody, uh, this or that, a Victoria's Secret commercial comes on, just, just go get you a sandwich. Go get you a cookie. You have my permission. But don't flip it. Make a covenant with your eyes. The Bible said that Lot did not do this. The scripture says he lifted up his eyes toward Sodom and Gomorrah. And then he pitched his tent toward Sodom and Gomorrah. And then he camped at the gate of Sodom and Gomorrah. And then he lived in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Then his children married the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah. And then his wife was so in love with the place that he lost her to the sins of that place. But it all started with him lifting up his eyes in Genesis 19 and seeing it and his whole life. He didn't make a covenant with his eyes. Your eyes need to have a covenant. You, you, you need to understand your life will always move in the direction of the dominant thoughts you allow to reside in your mind. You can't stop the bird from flying over your head, but don't let him make a nest in your hair. Control how long you look. Control how long you dwell. Control your thought life. What are you watching? What are you listening to? What are you saying? These are the issues that God had me deal with in this book because the reason people are defeated is because of what they're feeding their minds on. And the eye gate, the ear gate, and the mouth gate are extremely powerful. You will either lose the spiritual battle in the, in the spiritual realm by what you look at, listen to, and, and say, or you will win because of what you're looking at, listening to, and saying. Isaiah 57, 55 and 7 said, Let the wicked man forsake his sin, listen to this, and let the unrighteous forsake his faults. Did you know the word repent means to change your mind? In the Greek, it means, the word repent 
a change of mind. Unless your mind changes and you refuse to dwell on the things, you, you will never experience the blessing of repentance. Repentance is changing your mind. I change my mind about the lifestyle. I change my mind about the way I've been living. I change my mind about just ch casually playing and flirting with sin. I, I have a change of mind. I have repented of that, and I'm not going to touch it anymore. That's what happens in conversion. You need to understand that python stops, if, if the python stops incubating those eggs, they will die. And if we don't hover over and allow those eggs to hatch and grow, they will die. It's just the thought, and it'll die, but you can't feed it. In Ezekiel chapter 8, there is one of the most amazing stories in all of the Bible. This is one of the most astonish, astonishing things you'll ever see in Scripture. Ezekiel chapter 8. It talks about 70 priests and how that they had a secret chamber in the temple that they had created. They had put up a false wall, and behind the chamber, it is the first reference to lewd paintings and pornography in the Bible. They had drawn lewd paintings on the wall, the Scripture said, and they had idols that they were worshiping in the temple. And God says this in Ezekiel 8, he said, they think I can't see what they're doing in the secret chambers that they have created. But I can see, he said, I can drill a hole in the wall and I can see what's going on in the darkness in the secret chambers of the temple. Our body under the new covenant is the temple. And if we're not careful, we begin to build secret chambers and we separate the two from church and we come to church and we say, I love you, Lord, but we have secret chambers that we fill with darkness. And God says, I have the capacity to, draw, to drill a hole and I can see inside your secret chambers and I see the darkness. It's amazing to me how people are deceiving themselves and being deceived in this generation. I've actually had people say to me, I'm leaving my wife and I'm going to live with this younger, newer girlfriend that I've got. I'm leaving my children, my wife. And pastor, you know what? I'm saved and I'm filled with the Spirit. I'm going to live with her, sleep with her. I'm leaving that one that I made the vow to. And God says I'm still saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And, I, and to which I would like to respond, would you like me to tell you what kind of spirit you're filled with? You're, spill, you're filled with an immoral spirit. You're filled with an unclean spirit. You're filled with, with, with um, adultery. You're not filled with the Holy Spirit. You cannot do those kinds of things. You have to yield to the Holy Spirit and yield to His will. You cannot just live a lifestyle of sin. God said, I see. Now, here's what's amazing about these 70. Let me tell you who they were. If you go previously to the story of Moses, when he needed 70 elders, he picked 70 people. And they were helpers of Moses, and they ministered to the congregation. Now, catch this. But generations later, the children's children have secret chambers in the temple. They started out pure and holy, but now they have secret chambers and they fill those chambers with darkness and lewd things and unclean things and they're filling their eyes with it and their heart with it. And then you fast forward 17 generations and you go to Calvary and guess who it was that crucified Jesus? It was a group called, it was 70 men, a group called the Sanhedrin Court. They were direct descendants of the 70 that started started out with Moses, helping Moses, ministering, building the kingdom of God. But in between crucifying Jesus and starting out with great hearts and pure hearts, you have secret chambers that they were filling with uncleanness. And that's how far the evil thinking took them. They crucified Jesus. You see, we don't understand how far evil thinking will take us. David walked out on the balcony one day, and he saw a UFO, an unclothed female object. And when he saw her, 
All he had was a thought. It was just a thought. But the thought became lust, and the lust became adultery, and the adultery became murder, and the murder became thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt honor thy... He broke all ten commandments, but it all started with a thought. He never considered how far his thought life would take him. We have to understand that we're visual beings. Four million bytes of information per second at the speed of 187,000 miles per hour can go through our mind. Our mind paints pictures. If I say elephant, you see one. If I say red apple, you see one. It's just that quick your mind thinks in pictures and the enemy knows this. And our ears and our eyes are being polluted in this generation. The enemy is dropping thought bombs all the time. And when I think of the young people and the music that they're listening to, even little innocent at one time, Miley Cyrus, now she has a song to my my home girls here with a big butt, shaking it like we're at a strip strip club. Remember, only God can judge. Forget the haters because somebody loves you and everyone in the line in the bathroom trying to get a line, snort cocaine in the bathroom. That's what she was referring to. Dancing with Molly, which is ecstasy. Molly is a, is a, is a code name for ecstasy. Doing whatever we want. This is our house. This is our rules. And we can't, and we can't stop and we won't stop. Now, 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 kids are listening to this and you say, well, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. If you listen to it one time, but that's just one. And then you flip over to Kanye. And Kanye's talking about roll my weed on it. And, and I can't even say some of the stuff Kanye's talking about. It's filthy. It's so filthy. It's so filthy. And snake eggs, snake eggs, snake eggs of get high, get drunk, snort drugs, party, get involved sexually, get involved. It's saying it over and over and over and over. And oh, I can handle it, I can handle it, I can handle it. But sooner or later, those eggs are going to hatch. That's how it happens. I wish sometimes that sin happened instantly, but it doesn't. There's, you know, be not deceived, Galatians 6. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. But the thing we don't understand is time. It takes time. You don't sow and reap instantly. I wish it was. I wish it was like Pinocchio. The moment you told a lie, your nose grew. The moment you looked at something wrong, your eyes got bigger and bigger and bigger. It doesn't happen that way if... If I, uh, you know, if, 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 I, if I eat a Krispy Kreme donut, I, I weigh 172 pounds, sometimes 170, sometimes 169. It goes back and forth. And watch this. Mm. <laughs> I can preach all day. <laughs> This is awesome. And I can eat this and eat this, and then I could eat another one because I got 12 in here. And I could eat another one. I could eat the whole thing right now. You know what? I just ate that donut. It's full of calories. I still look good. Still got my high school figure. Look at me. No problems. No bulges. To which you would say, just wait. Matter of fact, I'm going to start eating this for breakfast every morning, and then I'm going to eat them for lunch, and at night before I go to bed, I'm going to eat some more. It won't bother me. I just did it. Nothing happened. That's what some of you are saying about sex. I did it. Nothing happened. I I did it. Nothing happened. I got drunk. Nothing happened. I went to that party. Nothing bad. Lightning didn't hit me. God didn't zap me. Nothing happened. It's just a law. That's all I'm just telling you. You sow, you reap. If I keep doing it, something's going to happen. It. Anybody got a lighter? I know you do. Fifteen year old. I don't have cancer. I can run the football field four times. It's not going to bother me. 
It's not going, look, nothing's happening. I'm smoking. I've been smoking for a year. I've been smoking for two years. I've been smoking. It's going to take some time. But if you keep doing it, Marlboro will be my burial. <laughs> Come on, I work hard on these jokes, folks. You got you to gotta give me a little... Cigarette smokers hate my preaching because right now they're having a nicotine fit. They're like, you want to get out behind a car in the parking lot just as quick as you can. But I'm going to get you free for this sermon. <laughs> you, you, you about to get over the hump. I, I'm almost through. Hold on. We love you. I'm not here to beat up on people. I'm just telling you. Nobody gets by with nothing. What you re If you sow to the flesh... If you're sowing to the flesh in your hearing and listening to Kanye, listening to all that, sowing to the flesh, you will of the flesh. It may not happen overnight. It may not affect you. But one night you're going to be in the car or in somebody's apartment and that song that you've listened to over and over and over and over, mm, something's going to happen and things are going to get out of control. If you sow to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap correction. But I love this. The same way you get in, you get out. But if you sow to the Spirit, doesn't happen overnight. Still struggling with this. Still, still, I, I, I'm doing better, you know. I, I, I'm just smoking uh, uh, four packs instead of six. But, but if you keep sowing to the Spirit, coming to church, hearing the Word, worshiping, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. If you have to, get them in your hand and, and, and light one up and uh, do whatever you got to do. But keep sowing to the Spirit. You will reap life everlasting. You'll get free. Same way in is same way out. Doesn't happen overnight. It happens up here. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed. Get the snake eggs out by the renewing of your mind. Thought bombs. Thought bombs of depression. But I was thinking about this last night. I've had the enemy hit me with thought bombs. I've had times, I, I don't know, uh, when I just felt for days and weeks, and I've had to learn this is warfare. This is spiritual war. It's not just a, where the enemy would say, just quit. I've even planned out in my mind my exit strategy. If you, if you give in to those thoughts, just quit. Just You're weary. You, you're taking the church as far as you can go. Just quit. I had him at every, at every level. Every level. When we were in the old building, just quit. Just quit. It ain't going to happen. You can't get the money. When we got in the other building, just give up. Just give up. People don't know the battles that we go through, but it's thought bombs. Boom. 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 Anybody know what I'm talking about? Just, just, just give up. Just depression and anxiety, fear, fear, fear. Oh, oh, I fought private battles of fear. And I've learned that that's spiritual warfare, and I've got to recognize it for what it is. It's a snake egg. That, that whole thing of doubt. Doubt that God is real. Doubt that the Bible is true. Doubt. He'll throw a thought bomb at you. Doubt creation. Doubt because there were dinosaurs or this or that. Doubt the whole Bible story. Doubt it. Believe Darwin and doubt God. I'm not denying some of those things may have happened. It might have happened after the fall. We don't deny. I don't, I'm not afraid of science. Science would just prove God is real. Come on, church. I believe that we're made in the image of God. I'm not going to doubt. I, I want to I tell you something. The first question mark came from Lucifer. Half God said, the first response of Jesus that he ever spoke, it is written. Satan's always raising questions. Jesus is always raising the word. It is written. 
Do you really believe God loves you? Do you really believe you're safe? Do you really believe? Do you really believe in the Bible? Do you really believe in that 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 if you trust God with your life and surrender everything to Him and 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 and, and really live for Him, that He'll direct your path and give you the desires of your heart? Do you really believe that? The real battle that's taking place is the battle for our minds. And many of you are fighting battles with depression and anxiety and worry and fear. Quitting. The thought bomb of quitting. Just, just give up. Just give up on that dream. Just give up. Just give up. Just quit. Just throw in the... Just quit the ministry. I'm telling you that God has blessed me and I have had to fight through the years, through seasons of thought bombs. Just quit. And you have to learn how to recognize the snake eggs and crush them before they hatch. And say, Lord, here I am. I surrender my life to you. I surrender everything I am. I surrender all that I have, all of my questions I give to you. Renew my mind. Transform my mind. Forgive me, cleanse me, and set me free. What's the question mark in your life? You don't have to allow negative thinking to take up space in your mind. You can win the battle of your thoughts and break the hold that fear, anxiety, and worry have over you. All this material is in my dad's new book, The Spirit of Python. This month, we are making a special offer to include The Spirit of Python, a 30-day devotional, and two inspirational teachings from the book for your gift of $35 or more. With the Spirit of Python exposing Satan's plan to squeeze the life out of you, you'll learn a valuable lesson on how to protect yourself and the ones that you love through the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the power that is yours to defeat the enemy through Jesus Christ. To get yours, call or go online now and take advantage of this special offer. And be sure to utilize all the resources we've created online to help build your faith. Your support allows us to take the gospel around the world including messages like you just heard. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Kingdom Connection. We are daughters of the King, and our dreams are more than wishful thinking. They are inspired and a gift from God. Our dreams are not meant to be buried. Join Cherise Franklin and the ladies of Divine for Royal Dreams. This amazing three-day women's conference will strengthen your faith encourage you to dream again and discover all that God has placed in you. You are a daughter of the King and your future is majestic. Royal Dreams tickets and info are available online now. Register today.